Hello everybody, Megan here, aka Turtle, and I am one of the environmental educators at the Tiffin Center for Conservation. Today I am going to introduce you to two of my favorite apps to use while exploring nature. These two apps are called Seek and iNaturalist. Seek is a kid-friendly version, where iNaturalist is a version for teens and adults. Both of these apps are identification tools, so you can use them to learn about the natural species that are around you. They also are great because they, you can submit the information that you collect, and the scientists will use them in order to understand a little bit more about species spread around our world. Very important when it comes to conservation. I hope you enjoy this, and I hope you get out and explore. The first app I'm going to show you is Seek. So when you open up Seek, will notice that it is by iNaturalist. So these two apps are connected. They actually share data between the two of them, which makes both of them better, which is always a benefit. The main difference is Seek is a kid-friendly version. So Seek will not upload any of your observations where iNaturalist will. So in terms of citizen science, if you are using Seek and you want your observations to be used, you would just have to upload them into iNaturalist after. So once you're on the main page, the, it will need to know your location, but the really cool thing about that is it gives you a list of kind of the common species that you would find in your area, which is nice to give you a hint of what you can be finding. It also lets you know if there's any challenges going on, and once you complete a challenge, you do get a badge, which is always fun. Once you are ready to use the app, you're going to click on the green camera button at the bottom of the screen. Once you open that up, you will see a reminder, and this just is a good reminder to go over with kids to always be aware of your surroundings, stay safe, and don't trespass, don't eat anything you find in the wild, and respect other living things by not harassing or touching them. Some may sting or bite. And just always make sure children are supervised when they are using this app. So once you're ready, you're going to hit continue. This app uses your camera to scan the natural species that are around you to determine what they are. Once you find something that looks very interesting, you're going to get as close as you can to the species. You're going to use your camera in order to scan the living thing to try and let the app figure out exactly what you are looking at. Sometimes this happens right away, sometimes it takes a little bit, it just depends on how clear of a picture you can get of the species. So right there I've gotten down to the genus, so I do want to get all the way to species. So seeing that I've got to genus there, I'm going to try and get a little bit closer. And right there I got to the species. And as you can see, when I got to species, it does light up the camera button. When you have the camera button lit up, you're going to press it and take a picture. Once you've done that, the app will bring you to an information screen about that species. So I've observed a new species, the rough horsetail. The information page just gives you a little bit more information about the species you have found. So we found a rough horsetail, it is native, and the date we observed it gives you some other commonly known names for it, and also where it, what it's known as in other countries. My personal favorite is snake grass. It also gives you a range map which shows you where it's been found in your area, and the total number of observations that have been made on Nine Naturalist. It also lets you know when you're most likely to find it during the year, and also similar species that you could find as well. One thing you can do when you're exploring is you can roll over some logs to find out who lives underneath it. The main important thing is always make sure that you put the log back after you're done looking. So I'm going to roll over this log right here and we're going to see who we can find. So right away I find a little friend here and it is, oh, a western dusky slug. Once I have a good picture, I'm going to take a picture of it once we get to the species. And sometimes you may have to just kind of fiddle with it a little bit. And once you've taken a picture of it, it adds it to my collection and I can learn a little bit more about it if I choose to. I can also look for other animals 
and oh i have found a badge as well which is a really fun thing to get as you keep finding different species you find different badges the next app i'm going to show you is iNaturalist iNaturalist is an app that is very similar to Seek, but it is designed for adults and teens because it actually uploads your photos to a server where other people can comment on it. Scientists can use that data to understand the spread of different species. Once you open up your iNaturalist, you'll see that it starts on your observation page. And these are just the different species that you have found while you've been using this app. It also, on the right hand side, you'll see that there's different kind of like plaques with numbers beside it. And those are just different people who have commented on the observations that you have made. Once you're ready to make an observation, you're gonna click on the green plus button right in the bottom right corner of your screen. Once you click on the button, it's going to give you five different options to submit an observation. The first one would be no photo, we don't really recommend you use this. Try to get at least a photo or a sound if possible. The next one is take a photo, then choose an image, choose a sound, or record a sound. The great thing about iNaturalist is you can actually use it to record a bird singing, and you can use that recording in order to figure out what type of bird there was. So today we're going to start with a choose image, and we're gonna choose an image of a species that we have already found today. So I am going to use the slug. Ideally, you take more than one photo of different angles because this really, really helps the other people to identify it. But for us, we'll just use the one. Once you have your photo, you're gonna click on what did you see? And once you've clicked on that, it will give you a option of the top 10 things that the app kind of thinks it is. So the Western Dusky Slug is one of them. So we're gonna click on that. You're gonna put any notes that you want to there. Could be it was a rainy day, kind of whatever you would like. The time and the date is very important. The location and if it was a wild species or a non-wild species. Once you've filled out all the information, you're gonna click on the upload button and you'll see that it is now uploading onto your app and different people will be able to comment on it. The other option you have to make an observation is to take a photo. So when you take a photo, the app will use your camera to take a photo of whatever species you are looking at. When you're taking a photo, you want it to be as clear as you possibly can get it because that will help with the identification process. Once you have a picture that you are happy with that is clear and takes up most of the screen, you're going to click OK. Once you hit OK, it will bring you to the exact same screen as if you had chosen your own image. You're going to click on what did you see. Once you click on this, it will give you the different options of what it could be. So they're pretty sure it's in the genus Mullins and they're pretty sure it's a common Mullin. We can figure this out a little bit more by clicking on Colin, common Mullin and you can actually compare and you can look at the pictures of this species and compare it to the picture that you took. So when I'm doing that, I see that yes, they do look very similar, but just to be safe, I am gonna put it in the genus of Mullins, not the actual species. Then I'm gonna write any notes if I need them, double check the time and the date, location, and I am going to click done. Now it will upload, and once it's done uploading, other people would be able to look at the observation I made, either agree or pinpoint it exactly, and that information will be used by scientists to learn more about the spread of that species. This app is great because it's not just for identifying different species you find, you can actually help different people as well. So when you click on the three bars in the upper left corner, you'll see that a different bar shows up. We have explore, projects, guides, activities, and missions. When you hit explore, this will give you a whole bunch of observations that other people have made and you can click on them and help them to confirm what or even let them know what they found so for right here we have lots of different observations we can go around and try and find something we like and we know what it is i'm going to click on this one 
and you're going to see that somebody found a colt foot in Tay Township, which is pretty close to where we are. Data quality that lets you know um, how good this observation is. The more people who comment on it, the better that it will be. So I agree, this is a colt foot, so I can put on that. And the more people that agree with the observation, the higher the data quality will be. You can also use this to look at different projects that are either nearby or that you have joined. So for me, the ones that I have joined is the Biodiversity of the Tiffin Center for Conservation. And when I click on that one, you'll see all the different species that have been identified at the Tiffin Center. The great thing about these projects is it does use your location. So anytime that I have found something at the Tiffin Center, it automatically adds it to this project. And as more people use this, the more information we learn about the different species at the Tiffin Center. Some of the projects that you can be a part of are either countrywide or even all around the worldwide. This one, Help the Turtles, is a initiative by the Canadian Wildlife Federation to help know where turtles are found all around Canada. So every single time you take a picture of a turtle, it will automatically upload to this group and that helps the scientists to know where turtles are located to help better conserve and protect. I hope you enjoyed the brief introduction to the two apps that I love to use. I hope this encourages you to get out and start exploring and learning more about the natural world around us. See you next time.